Hi, Maxime here. So one more time. So I'd like to thank the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative to help us doing like these bite-sized talks. So today, Phil Yules uh, from Sekera will uh, explain us like how to contribute to uh, Nextflow. And I've seen that before and it is like quite amazing and impressive. So as usual, like you'll be able to unmute yourself at the end of the talk to ask your question. But uh, for now, if you have like any question, feel free to ask them like on the chat. Otherwise, like you can uh, ask them like on Slack and uh, we'll be able to answer like all of them later. So over to you, Phil, and don't forget to share your screen. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Maxime. Um, and welcome everyone. Um, thanks for joining us today. Uh, I, was, I was joking as we were warming up that this might be close to a record for um, a bit of a kind of short timeline for a bite-sized talk. I think we were, we were chatting earlier, like, do we have anything for today? And I, I came up with an idea and during a meeting and then I went for lunch and then I've had about five minutes to prepare and here we are. So it's an adventure for all of us. Um, but it's a bit of a fun fun, uh, fun topic, I think. So for anyone who doesn't know me, um, I'm Phil. I work at Sekera, like Maxime says, and I've been uh, kicking around NFCore for many years. Um, helped co-found it at the start and <laughs> and uh, and quite enjoy doing these little live demos with you all. So the topic for today is um, about Nextflow itself, which is actually something we talk about surprisingly little. Um, many of us spend a lot of time building uh, NFCore pipelines, uh, building with Nextflow as basically sort of a programming language, if you like, uh, or building infrastructure around the projects like, you know, CICD or uh, websites and all this kind of stuff. But relatively... A uh, few people actually do any development work with Nextflow itself, um, or uh, and that's what I want to talk about a little bit today. Um, the idea for this came off the back of a recent pull request that I just got merged into port, into Nextflow. Um, I think it's probably one of the second or third pull requests I've done, you know, like ever in the past eight years. Um, so um, it doesn't happen very much, and, and it was kind of a fun experience. So I thought I'd just sort of walk you through what I did, and we'll we'll see if we can get there together. Um, it's going to be pretty high level and <clears throat> next row itself is written in Groovy and I'm not very experienced with Groovy at all. So this is kind of a beginner's view of, of what it's like to contribute to the project, if you like. So let me share my screen. There we go. I wonder if I can put myself into the screen. How's that? I'm very tiny. Does that look rubbish? I'll just do it normally. Um, right. So um, many of you will have seen stuff I've written before. By the way, shout if the text is too small or anything. Um, but uh, one of the things I really like to do is I like to make things kind of pretty. Um, I did much of the work in the early days with the NFCore tools package. Um, and that's got nice colors. And when you do NFCore download, it uses a, uh, like, uh, it has like a progress bar showing you and stuff like this. And and many of the tools I've done, I kind of try and put some effort into making the making it visually attractive and, and accessible, and, and that includes on on the terminal where things have pretty traditionally had pretty rubbish kind of um, display. Now, uh, almost a running joke at this point is how much I like um, a library called uh, Rich, um, which is by a chap called Will McGugan, uh, who's now spun this out into a company called Textualize. Um, but really the start of all that was this Python library called Rich. Um, and it's a library you can use to put into your applications to easily do nice styling in the terminal. So you can just say, I want to do some, you know, red text or whatever, um, bold magenta, and it will just work. And you don't really need to think about it very much. Um, on the back end, what the library is doing is it's doing something called um, creating what's called ANSI codes, ANSI which are kind of control codes, which are sent to a terminal, which don't print anything onto a terminal, um, but they tell the terminal, okay, now use this foreground color or this background color or change the text in this way and that way. <laughs> ANSI codes is almost like a mini language of its own. Um, and it's a, a complete pain to write manually. You never want to do that. So um, libraries such as Rich just give you a nice syntax to be able to apply these ANSI codes onto what's being printed to the terminal. Okay, so I've done quite a lot with Rich over the years. I've built a couple of libraries on top of Rich and other things, um, and that's fine. But the problem is, once you start making all these applications look nice in the terminal, you start to notice the ones which are not very pretty and colorful. <laughs> and um, so uh, a while ago, I've been talking about it for a long time, but I put an, an issue onto the GitHub, onto the Nextflow GitHub repo back in, 
in May saying, it would be nice if we could have some color on the next flow logs that we all spend so much time looking at. Um, and I mocked something up basically. And because I'm used to Python and I'm used to rich library and everything, I, I did a little, little Python script where I just copied an output static string from, from an Xflow run and just like colored it manually oh, using Rich to see, see how it would look in the, uh, in the terminal. Basically. No, this was on the floor. Uh, maybe in minutes. I'm just gonna, we... There we go. Thank you. <laughs> um, and so I came up with this um, and was like, we should do this. Um, and that was very nice, but Paolo was like, yeah, I'm not sure we're going to be able to do this very easily because um, Nextflow is built in Groovy, which is built on top of Java, and there isn't any other libraries like Rich where you can just sort of do this easily. Um, of course, that's like a red rag to a bull. So um, I, I couldn't let this sit there and just nothing happened. So eventually uh, I sort of started playing with it a bit more and Paolo said, uh, you know, if you want to do it, you do it. <laughs> so I had no choice. <laughs> there was no one who was going to do it for me. I tried my hardest. So um, what did I do? I, I cloned the Nextflow repo. I forked it and cloned it just as you would with anything else. Um, hit fork and then hit, you know, clone, GitHub repo clone, uh, and I loaded it up. Um, and the Nextflow repo is massive. Uh, there is, I don't know how many hundreds or thousands of files in here. Um, so what I did was I, I, ran, a, I ran a Nextflow uh, next, I'm going to make a, a subdirectory called testing, just empty directory. Um, and I'm going to do next flow run hello. Uh, if you've never done this before, this is running uh, a pipeline which is on GitHub called next flow hello. Um, and it just does something very simple. Uh, and this is the output I was getting, which is, which is black and white. And I can, okay, this must be written somewhere in the code. So I'm just going to search for it on a global search on the project level. You can see it comes up in the docs a bunch. Um, so let's exclude any markdown files. Um, there's a log file in the snippets. Uh, and then there's two files which come up with it. And this looks kind of promising, log.info next flow. OK, so even though I really have nothing, no idea at all about Groovy code or next flow project or anything, quite quickly, I can sort of find my way to resource code here. Um, this looks sensible, even I can kind of understand what's going on here. Right, so if I uh, change something then to just to see if I can edit it, Bill was here and run it again, um, but it didn't work. <laughs> so nothing happens, right? The output was exactly the same, even though the source code was, was changed. Now, uh, of course, the reason for this is that Nextflow I have installed and it sat uh, on my path as a binary file and, and everything. So the, even though I've cloned the repository, the source code is not what I'm actually running when I run Nextflow. So the first question then is, how do I run the source code? Um, I think that there is now some documentation about this on the Nextflow website. It's under contributing at the bottom, which is a fairly new part of the documentation. This used to be kept in a few README files on the repo, which no one would ever find. And, uh, and Ben Sherman at Sakira, we chatted about it and he moved this into the main docs. So there is now actually some documentation about how Nextflow is built and how to contribute to it. But the short version is that if you look um, in the top level of the Nextflow project, there's a special file, which is a bash file called launch.sh. You don't need to know what it is or what it does or how it works. We don't care about that. But I'm I'm in my, my testing directory and I can go up one level, um, launch, uh, and I can do run exactly the same as if I, this could just be the word next flow. So now I'm going to, instead of next flow run hello, I'm going to do launch run hello. And now this is running the local code base for next flow. Great. But it still didn't update. Okay, so I'm missing one step. I'm actually going to jump into a, a second uh, terminal window here. So, it's, um, but I'm still in the same GitHub repository. There's a testing directory. And now I'm just in the root. Um, the, there's another important file, which is a make file, which is basically, if you've never used make scripts before, it's a, a way to kind of automate kind of steps. It's kind of a bit like a mini pipeline in a way. Some people make pipelines. And of course, Snake Maker is based on a similar idea. Um, there are some instructions in here. You can do a bunch of things with the make file, but the only one we care about is one called. Uh, a command called compile. And this is the key. So now when I do make compile, um, the, the, all, the, all the code within the repo is going to build Nextflow from the source code. Um, and then when I rerun launch, 
it will actually should this is this this changed source code will will be in the built distribution, um, and when I run it, it should show up on the terminal in theory. We'll see. <laughs> build successful. That's that's a good first step because if it fails, we're in trouble. Uh, and now if I do launch, there we go. It shows up. That's the crux of the whole talk today, really. <laughs> that's that's the main thing I wanted to sort of show, which is like that is how you clone the GitHub repo from Nextflow, make some source code changes, uh, and then get it to actually run locally so you can test it and play around with it and stuff. Um, everything else I did on that pull request was pretty much like a continuation of this, uh, where I messed around more and more and tried to figure out how the code was working. Um, I ended up finding that there was a file in here called ANSI log observer, uh, which is all the code basically, which runs the, the ANSI logging, which is this stuff. Um, and so I started to search for other strings like process. There you go. There is the string which is being generated, which has got the process stuff. So I just went through all this code bit by bit and sort of messed around with it and played with it and changed some behavior and um, and added in some colors. And, and the way that I did colors, not that you need to know, is um, we already are using a library in Nextflow called Jancy. Uh, so I just used the existing functionality, which was already being included into Nextflow. Jancy is not as good as Rich, <laughs> but it, it works fine. Um, okay. So at this point I go, now draw the owl. <laughs> um, there are many steps which took me a long time uh, between the start point and the end point, but um, that's not very interesting or uh, educational. So now I'm just gonna sort of skip ahead and, and show you a little bit about what the end product looked like as a treat for listening to me up until this point. Uh, so I'm gonna just check out, just gonna get rid of my changes. And I'm going to get pull because this has actually been merged onto master. So if I pull, you can see all the code just updated here. And this is all my new code. Um, and you can see stuff like um, now that this is one case where I did actually have to write manual ANSI codes. This is why you don't want to do it normally. Um, and you can see there's a sort of bunch of new stuff here. So now let's try it out as a little sneak peek of what will be coming to your next load distribution the next time you there's an edge release and you update. Do launch.sh run hello. And we have some beautiful colored output. Um, I'm going to go on a bit of a slight digression now and tell you a little bit about what I did in this, even though it's not really part of the focus of the talk. But I think it's interesting and I'm curious to get the feedback from everybody. So if I uh, just kick off Docker and then instead of running hello, which is so small, it's actually kind of difficult to see stuff, I'm going to do run nf core RNA seek minus. Out for results. No, out there. What am I talking about? Uh, minus profile test Docker. Uh, now, um, now we again it's running my locally developed software with a with a real pipeline here, and you can see it's just you can use this launch script exactly the same as you would with the, the next flow binary. Um. And then when it actually gets to kicking off all the processes, you'll see a few changes, um, which I've done here, which is kind of fun. Firstly, uh, there's lots of processes which haven't started yet. And Nextflow shows you all of these by default, so you can sort of see the whole pipeline. But when you don't have much space or there's loads of processes, they will push everything that's actually running off the top of the screen. So now they are hidden by default um, once you've run out of vertical space. So it's telling you that um, Nextflow is hiding some of the processes which are waiting for tasks. If there's anything that's actually running, it will still show up. Um, some other changes. Now, uh, if there's not enough space to show the whole process name, instead of just chopping off the end of it, uh, I've changed it so it chops off the start of it, because usually the end of the process selector is the interesting bit. Um, you can see there's a bunch of different syntax highlighting now, so that it's easier to see the actual process name, which again is the most interesting bit of a fully qualified name. And things like the, uh, the label uh, or the target are shown um, and it's also, we've got some nice coloring just to sort of highlight things which are, which are running properly. Um, that's sort of pretty much it really. Um, I'm gonna, gonna wrap up there. Um, so I'm uh, curious to see what everyone thinks of these changes. Hopefully you like them, but feel free to give some feedback on that. Last thing I wanna touch is that contributing to Nextflow is not always about code itself. Uh, messing around with groovy code is fun. Uh, but the other thing which, of course, many people and really anyone can contribute to is the documentation. 
And so everything that you see under the Nextflow docs here is all part of the Nextflow repository as well and all public and under the docs directory. This is built using Sphinx. It used to all be in RST, um, but over the last year or so in 2023, Ben went, uh, did a Herculean effort and converted all of the RST documentation into Markdown. So now it's exactly the same syntax as all the other documentation that we write everywhere else. It's just Markdown. You can just jump in and write some code or fix some docs. This is a great way to contribute. This is no, you don't need to mess around with any of this complex stuff. You can just jump in, edit the Markdown file and open a pull request. You can build docs locally, but there's not really any need because if you open a pull request where you've edited the docs, you'll get, we get automatic previews of those documentation. Um, so you see it rendered uh, in the pull request, same as the NF Core website. Okay, with that, I'm going to wrap up and happy to sort of take any questions. No, amazing. Uh, no, no, that was really impressive, but I guess I knew that already, but yes, definitely. Uh, I think I have like one question. Uh, when is Rich like coming to Groovy or Nextflow? <laughs> um, I, I saw a, uh, when I posted on Twitter about this yesterday, I um, Will McGugan, who wrote the Rich library, commented on it with a with a GIF, and I, I sort of made a joke that he should... Uh, he should rewrite Rich for Java. <laughs> It'd be nice. Unfortunately, Rich packages I don't know how many tens of thousands of lines of code. So <laughs> I'm not going to be doing that anytime soon. But I would love it if someone did. Oh, I think that's a nice project for someone. Okay. Uh, anyone else has any question? Uh, you should be able to. I think everyone should be able to unmute themselves. Yes. But the real test is to see how many pull requests start coming into into Nextflow now to to fix a typo in a log message or something like that. That's the kind of thing I'd love to see. I remember for me, I've made like a couple of PR like for the docs, and I've made like a couple of PR as well for the run names. You yeah. know, like the adjective and the and the name of the scientist. So yeah, if exactly. you find like any French like uh, scientist, I might be like uh, responsible for that. Okay, that's the he's one of them, right? Name generator dot groovy. Yes, Pastor, may, maybe Pastor is not me because he's well known, but uh, so search for French. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> These are all uh, Maxime's contributions. Yeah, there's always space for more names. Matthias asks Is the ASCII sock in Nextflow run socks colorized now? No, it's not. <laughs> but that's that's not core Nextflow code. That's, uh, that's just a Nextflow pipeline. So uh, just like the like I showed, the Nextflow run hello is is actually GitHub repo at Nextflow IO slash hello. The uh, the Nextflow run socks is at Nextflow IO slash socks, and uh, you're welcome to go and add colors. <laughs> I did think so. Anyone who's not aware about Nextflow run socks, this is a um, sort of a, an in joke slash Easter egg that came out of the um, the hackathons and, and summits last year when we were giving away. Uh, both socks and also we had a, a, a running t-shirt for the people who went on a run, but also just anyone. And it said on the front next flow, we had next flow run faster and next flow run socks, I think. Oh, maybe it said on the socks itself, next flow run socks. So we made an actual pipeline so that the command actually works. And so you can you can run that in your terminal now. Should I try it? Yes, show it. It's always fun. With colors. There you go. It's an emoji, so it does have some colors, Matthias, in this case. <laughs> I think it picks what type of sock you get randomly. So if I keep running it, maybe I'll get different socks. Maybe it's always the same one. Yes, but maybe your uh, your is updated. Mm -hmm. uh, try the latest one. Ah, I'm not gonna... <laughs> yeah, anyway. <It'll> <laughs> Good. Cool. Then thank you again. Uh, see you everyone and uh, see you soon. Thanks everyone.